Okay, good morning, BSRT2 students. So, assuming that I already checked your attendance and that you responded well, thank you very much. So, now may I welcome you to my subject. This is RT213. This is Principles of Imaging. So, upon hearing this subject, so what comes into your mind kaya? So, can I call anybody to answer? Okay, hindi ko naman magagawa yun because we are here on a virtual classroom. So, before I proceed to our discussion for today, allow me to have uh, a short story. So, this is a story of a radiologic technologist. Okay, so that is, oh, ayan. So, akala nyo artista? Hindi, that's ako po yan. So, magmamayabang lang po muna ako, ano, before anything else, balitaw. So, um, uh, I may relate this to my future radiologic technology students or my future radiologic technologists from the University of Eastern Philippines. So, yung nakikita niyo sa picture, so that will be your future daily routines. So, you will be uh, conducting your procedure in a typical diagnostic imaging room. So, hin modesty aside, hindi lang puro mag-picture. No? So, you will... Uh, produce a good quality radiograph so you have to be familiar with the equipment that you will be using to your protocols to your standard uh, standard operating procedures of your institution okay so sad to say this portion or this subject is not all about myself this is all about the students who are doing their best to become or to achieve the dream that they are aspiring for, of course, to become a radiologic technologist. So, I was once inspired by my students who performed uh, very well in uh, such uh, laboratory activities. So, when they were under with me in this subject, so they produced their handmade or their own x-ray films. Okay, so that made me proud of myself because somehow I have been is it okay to say that I have been an effective teacher in this subject so um, that is what I am also wishing for although we already shifted to a full, full online mode of strategy of teaching okay so yun lang yung story so teacher tapos nagproduce ng rad tech and that my question is are you now ready to produce your own x-ray film okay so yun po ang magiging daloy ng ating mga discussion in this semester in this subject so we will convert your eye a student eye into an eye of a radiologic technologist bakit because remember that diagnostic radiography is the eye of medicine. What I'm trying to say is, without a quality radiograph, there is no good diagnosis of the patient. Okay, so I hope you can already answer this one. Okay, so now... I will bring you to our topic for today, which is X-ray imaging system. As I've said, before you uh, produce a good quality radiograph, you have to be familiar with your equipment, your facility, your institution, your flow, your protocols, and your standard operating procedures. So it has to be remembered that radiography is an art and science acquired by study and practice in the use of X-rays to produce images. The art is in the equipment and accessories such as film, cassettes, and protection devices to produce images of the body. The art of radiography also includes the positioning of anatomic parts in such a way as to demonstrate specific features of human anatomy. So being a radiologic technologist, we are reminded that we have to balance our skills, our knowledge, and our attitude. Because in the long run, these three will contribute to produce, again, a good quality radiograph. Okay? 
So, for this morning, we will discuss the different types of x-ray machine. Yung nakikita ninyong x-ray machine, hindi lang yun yung uh, typical na pwede natin gamitin out of being a radiologic technologist. In fact, we can use a wide variety of x-ray machines that are usually identified according to the energy, okay? Energy and the x-ray produced or to which they are or the x-rays are intended as to what is the application of that x-ray machine. So we have here diagnostic imaging systems come in many different shapes and sizes. These are systems that operate at voltages of 25 to 150 kVp and at tube currents of 200 to 1200 Ma. Okay, so yung sinabi pa lang dito is diagnostic x-ray imaging system. But as we've been saying, there are many different type of x-ray machines. So let's get to know them. Okay, so in this section, we have here different types of x-ray machines. Yes, they are different types of x-ray machines. So we have here their appropriate energy in terms of kilovolt peak or in terms of voltage and we have here their application okay so first we have diffraction so diffraction x-ray machine it has an energy of less than 10 kvp and this is used primarily in the field of research particularly in the structural and molecular analysis so this is an example of a uh, diffraction x-ray machine next we have the grenz rays it has an energy of 10 to 20 kilovolt, and this is used in the field of medicine, particularly in dermatology. So this is an example of Grand's race. So this is already obsolete, meaning we is it is not already used in the market. Next, we have superficial X-ray machine. So it, it it ranges from 50 to 100 kilovolt peak, and it is used in the therapy of superficial tissues. So this is an example of a superficial X-ray machine. Like for example, the patient has been found out to have a um, malignant tumor of the skin. So it may be treated with the use of uh, superficial um, x-ray machine next we have diagnostic x-ray machine which is which covers an energy from 25 to 150 kilovolt peak and this is mostly popular this is what we are talking about this is used in the field of imaging anatomic structures and tissues so most of our discussion we are we will be dealing with the diagnostic uh, x-ray machine Next, machines were are orthovoltage, supervoltage, and megavoltage x-ray machines. So these are particularly useful in the field of radiation therapy to treat um, cancers with the use of ionizing radiation. So when we say orthovoltage, it has an energy of 200 to 300 kilovolt peak. And of course, it is used in the therapy of deep lying tissues. For supervoltage, it has an energy of 300 to 1000 kVp and it is used in the therapy of deep lying tissues. Last but not the least, of course, because not the least because it has the greatest energy, okay, so we, it has an energy of greater than 1 megavoltage and this is used primarily in the therapy of deep lying tissues and in the, in the field of industry, this is used in checking the integrity of welded materials. So this is the orthovoltage, this is the supervoltage, and this is the megavoltage. Okay, so I think you are excited to use um, which type of x-ray machine that is in the near future. So I am already excited to, um, to, to hear your stories or a red text story perhaps. Okay, so let's move on. The X-ray imaging system. So again, we have to get to know our equipment. So in this subject, we will be using the diagnostic imaging or the diagnostic X-ray procedures. So particularly since our university has only one available machine, which is a conventional X-ray machine. 
So, by the way, in these modern times, we have already shifted or some of the hospitals already shifted from the conventional. Some hospitals offer um, computed radiography and some of them offer digital radio, uh, radiography. But the essence is they are still on or the principle of operation is still on the conventional radiography except that they don't use the dark room. So the general purpose X-ray examination room contains the radiographic uh, imaging system. So the radiographic X-ray tube is attached to an overhead movable crane assembly that permits easy positioning of the tube and aiming of the X-ray beam. This type of equipment can be used for nearly all radiographic examinations. So it says here that the X-ray tube, hindi siya naka-float lang. This is attached to an um, overhead movable crane assembly that permits easy positioning of the tube. Okay, so the tube can be rotated towards the right. It can be rotated towards the left. It can be moved upward and it can be moved downward. So this structure is essential. But later... There are modifications for this type of support of the X-ray tube. Next. Regardless of the type of X-ray imaging systems used, a patient supporting examination couch, this one is required. The examination couch may be flat. Okay, so as we can see here, this is flat and this is not curved, but must be in uni uniform in thickness and transparent to x-rays as possible. Carbon fiber couches, so the material of choice for the x-ray table or this couch is a carbon fiber. So these are strong and absorb little radiation. This contributes to reduced patient radiation dose. So it therefore, X-rays emanating from the X-ray tube will e can easily pass these carbon fiber materials and be um, will now ready to interact with the image receptor that will be found in the bucket tray if the procedure is bucky procedure, because there are what we call the out bucky procedure. Let's say we have here the patient, so under the anatomy of interest, we place the cassette and that is on top of the table. For the Bucky procedures, we have here the patient, okay, of course the table, and below the table or behind the table, that is we have a certain portion there, the Bucky tray, so we place the image receptor, okay? So, okay. So regardless of its design, every X-ray imaging system has three primary re parts. Remember that we have the X-ray tube, this is the heart of the X-ray machine, the operating console, this is the portion in which most of radiologic technologists are familiar with, and the high voltage generator. In some of the X-ray imaging systems, these, or such as the dental and portable X-ray machines, these three components are housed compactly. Like if uh, may makikita kayong mga machine na tinutulak, so what we call that is the portable X-ray machine. If the patient cannot be moved from the ward or let's say from the operating room, so tatawag na lang ng radtech from the X-ray department to perform such procedure, so pwede silang pumunta sa ward or sa operating room gamit ang portable X-ray machine. Yung mga stationary, yung table, hindi yan pwede nating dalhin doon. Ano? So with most systems, however, the X-ray tube is located in the examination room, okay? And the operating console is located in an adjoining room with a protective barrier separating the two. This one, this explanation exp is applicable to those that are or that cannot be used. Yung sinasabi ko kanina cannot be transferred from one place from the radiology to the operating room. This must be fixed inside a certain location okay so for example what we have in UEP hindi yan portable ha klarohan ko lang hindi yan portable that is a stationary or a fixed x-ray machine okay so the protective barrier ito yung may kita nyo the wall in which sabi nga nila doon nagtatago yung radtech dito tayo all the time 
So, this must have a window for viewing the patient. Ito yung window. Okay. Uh, during the examination. So, ideally, the room should be designed so that it is possible to reach the operating console without having to enter radi radiation area of the examination. So, the high voltage generator or the third most important portion of the X-ray machine or uh, X-ray imaging facility. So, most of its discussion will be discussed uh, on the semest second semester, particularly on the equipment maintenance. So, again, the high voltage generator may be housed in an equipment cabinet positioned against a wall. So, a high voltage generator is always close to the X-ray tube usually in the examination room. A few installations take advantage of false ceilings and place these generators out of sight above the examination room. Like for example, in our institution, parang hindi nyo ma-appreciate masyado kung nasaan si a generator. But, um, sige lang, later you will find out kung nasaan yung generator. Okay, so before that, I would like to... Uh, I would like you to join me in a short um, tour in the diagnostic imaging room of the University of Eastern Philippines. Welcome. couch that is normally what we call our x-ray table. So sad to say, hindi siya yung natitilt table. Yung ibang machine kasi natitilt siya. Okay? Uma, pwede natin i-adjust pa upright yung table. Ito siya kasi stationary. So ito naman yung ating yan, 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 yan. Nandyan yung ating x-ray tube. So pwede natin siyang ma-adjust Okay, pwede nating pataas sa pababaan. Pwede nating itaas. Depende sa ating procedure. Pwede nating iharap papunta doon. Okay, nahirapan ako kasi mag-isa lang akong nagbi-video. Hindi naman ako tinutulungan ni Angelo. Okay. So, ito yung tinatawag nating um, vertical grid holder. So, kasi this is for upright procedures such as chest or upright abdomen or pwedeng uh, waters basta patayo yung pasyente or paupo so pwede natin siyang i-adjust pababa pwede nating pataas okay so dyan pwede natin din to matilt okay huwag lang muna kasi mahirap okay so ito naman yung ating protective barrier if ever, pupunta tayo sa ating X-ray console. So, this is our X-ray console or operating console of the X-ray machine. Which means, lahat ng ating discussion in this subject nakafocus, especially dito sa KVP and MAS. Okay, sige. So ayun, like any other machines, kailangan i-turn on muna natin ang aton main switch. So, ito. So, pull the lever up. Okay, so that's simultaneously pag ma-on mo ito, yung ilaw sa labas, the red light will be at the same time naka-turn on siya. Kasi that's the requirement of the Department of Health. Okay, so now let's go to the operating console. So na-on mo na sa main switch. Kailangan ma-turn on mo naman yung ating x-ray machine. So makikita nyo yung button niya dito sa record. Okay, so iilaw yan. And then, press mo to. Okay, so nakita nyo, 
It's color red. Mag-change pa yan. Once nasa console tayo, hindi tayo dapat nakatunganga lang dito. Or yung tingin natin is puro nasa factor lang. Dapat yung tingin natin is nasa window na ito. Tapos chinecheck natin si pasyente. At ayun si Angelo yung sinasabi ko na hindi tumutulong sa akin. Okay, so dapat chinecheck mo siya doon. Or kung yung pasyente mo nandun sa vertical grid device, dapat chinecheck mo. Check mo yung movement, kung pinafollow yung instruction, check mo yung position kung hindi nagbago. So, yeah, that's it. So, pag matapos ka ng mag-x-ray, i-reverse mo yung process, ano? So, off mo to. Tapos, yung button dito, iba, uh, yung lever, baba. And then, Punta ka naman sa main switch. Okay? So, turn it off. Okay, very good. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed our short tour with our... Uh, Diagnostic Imaging Room of the University of Eastern Philippines. Okay, sige. Now, let's proceed. Okay, so na-mention ko na kanina about the operating console. So, what is our operating console? So, this is the part of the X-ray imaging system most familiar to the radiologic technologist. This is the operating console. So, this allows the radiologic technologist to control the tube current and the voltage so that useful beam is of proper quantity and quality. So in our entire semester, we will be dealing with the um, quantity of photon and the photon quality. Sige, so let's watch this video. I hope makatulong din sa inyo. So from red, naging blue na siya, which means pwede na tayong mag-conduct ng x-ray. But before that, kailangan alam muna natin yung technical factor. So, nakita nyo to, that's kilo voltage. Okay, so that's particularly for energy, for the attenuation. At ito naman, MAS, that's for the quantity or the number of x-ray photons that will reach the patient. So, kailangan alam mo yung technic factor. Adjust mo if gusto mo pababaan. So, remember that for diagnostic imaging uh, machine, so the KVP is from 25 to 150. Hindi naman lahat kasi may mga machine na naka-program. At an installation, naka-program siya. Like this one, the minimum uh, KVP is only 40. So, although diagnostic imaging uh, machine pa din naman siya. So, I guess this is only for 150 KVP. So this is for one and uh, gusto mo taasan up to 150 MA or 200 MA. Ayun. So that's the function of our operating console. So may kita mo dito, this is uh, indication for line compensation. Dito naman kung may mga troubleshooting tayo like sa line, sa KVP, in the filament, etc. So it, it the discussion all about this will be the content of this subject, this principles of imaging. Pag alam niyo yung mga, mga combinations nito, so therefore you can produce now your own quality radiograph. Okay, so I'll keep you hanging uh, on that kasi parami-rami pa naman tayong meetings. So, okay. Okay, very good. So, I hope na may nakuha kayo out of the short uh, tour. Ano? So, dyan tayo mostly in our, again, ulit-ulitin ko lang, most of our time in this subject, doon tayo magpo-focus sa ating operating console. Okay? Sige. The operating console usually provides for the control of the line compensation, the KVP, MA, and exposure time. 
Okay, so this is quite a mention kasi most of its discussion will be for next semester. This is particularly on the equipment maintenance. Methods are provided for monitoring KVP, MA, and the exposure time. Some consoles also provide a matter for MAS. Imaging systems that incorporate automatic exposure control, that's what we call sometimes the photo timer, may have a separate console for MAS. All of the electric circuits that connect the matters and controls on the operating console are at low voltage to minimize the possibility of hazardous shock. Sige, again. Sige, um, hindi muna natin ipa-fast forward. Okay, so, um, uh, may excite ko lang kasi next semester you will have the equipment maintenance. So, the operating consoles are based on the computer technology controls and matters. These are digital and techniques are selected with a touch screen. Numeric technique selections are um, is often replaced by icons indicating the body part, size, and shape. So, many of the features are automatic, but the radiologic technologist must know their purpose and their proper use. Kung makikita nyo tong portion na to, meron dyang mga body types. May hugos, ya only what, matambok. Ano? So, din he, sa mga squares, may mga nakasurat dida nga mga body part. Okay, like for example, you press dida ito nga hugos, tapos you press chest. So, may maga appear dida nga mga technical factors. So, this console, I would like to make a clarification. This is not uh, in the University of Eastern Philippines. This is from this is my former um, operating console way back when I was working at the Leyte Provincial Hospital. And this is also the same for that being used at the Northern Samar Provincial Hospital. Okay, sige. So, ganun lang. So, our main point here is our operating console, kaya nga operating, so we perform operational, uh, uh, let's say, mathematic operations to come up with the right amount of KVP and the right amount of MA or exposure time. Kaya tinawag siyang operating console. Okay? So now let's proceed to another um, important um, part of the X-ray imaging system. This is the X-ray tube. Kung kanina, the operating console, this is the uh, most familiar part of an X -ray, uh, radiologic technologist. So the X-ray tube naman is the heart of the X-ray machine because this is where the creation of the X-ray that we are using to produce a good quality radiograph. So the X-ray tube is a component of the X-ray imaging system rarely seen by the radiologic technologists. So it is contained in a protective housing and therefore it is inaccessible. Its components are considered separately but it should be clear that there are two primary parts, the cathode and the anode. Each of these is an electrode and any electronic tube with two electrodes is a diode. An X-ray tube is a special type of diode. And I hope, since we are talking about diode, we already know the charges. I hope that you can identify which part of the, the X-ray tube is negatively charged and which one is um, positively charged. I know. Anyways, we have a separate uh, discussion about that. So first, let's come. Uh, let's have the support system of the X-ray tube. Kasi sabi ko naman kanina, it can be moved up, down, right, left. So basically, X-ray tube is not um, uh, or is embedded in the X-ray machine. Hindi siya detachable, ano? So kailangan it should have a support system. So, una, pwede siyang magkaroon ng ceiling support system. So, nakikita nyo sa picture, mayroong um, nagsusupport sa x-ray tube. Okay? Sabi dito, the ceiling support system is probably the most frequently used. It consists of two perpendicular sets of ceiling mounted rail. This allows for both longitudinal and transverse travel of the x-ray tube. Okay. Ano pa? 
a telescoping column attaches the x-ray tube housing to the rails. Ito, may mga, may mga railings. Ayun. Yeah. Allowing for variable source to image receptor distance. Okay. So, sa radiography kasi, there should, there's a specific des distance for every procedure. If that procedure is performed on the table and if that procedure is performed on the back or vertical grid device, especially for chest, so may mga SID tayo for every type of procedure. So when the x-ray tube is centered above the examination table, the standard SID, so the x-ray tube is in the preferred detent position. So meron pa lang dapat uh, standardized position yung uh, ceiling support system. You know? Okay, next. Other positions can be chosen and lack per radiologic technologist. Some ceiling supported x ray tubes have a single control that removes all locks, allowing the tube to float. Wow. So, yes, basically because of, this, of the ceiling support system, so para siyang lumulutang, although may, may hinahawakan naman yung x-ray tube. Ang kinagandahan lang kasi dito is that um, yung mga naka-stretcher can already be performed using the uh, ceiling support system. They don't have to be transferred from the stretcher to the x-ray table. So this lock should be used only for mi minor adjustments and should not be used to move the tube further than about 1 meter because arm and shoulder stain can occur. So hindi pala pwede siya sa mga long distance relationship kasi baka maghiwalay. Joke. Okay, so there's only a certain distance para sa movement ng ating ceiling support system. So this is the most popular Sinasabi kong most popular kasi ito yung ginagamit natin sa university. So, the floor to ceiling support system has a single column with rollers. Uh, at each end, one attached to a ceiling mounted rail and the other to a floor mounted rail. So, the x-ray tubes slide up and down the column as the column rotates. A variation of this type of support system has the column positioned on singles uh, floor support system with one or two more mounted rails. Okay, so it has again uh, single co so single column rollers attached at each end of the ceiling mounted rail. So to a floor mounted rail. Ito yun. Okay, so the X-ray tube slides up and down. So, a variation of... The, so, merong dito sa ceiling at meron din sa floor. Okay. So, yung mga railings, pwedeng isa lang, pwedeng... Sa university kasi, we are having the two rails. Okay. So, now we have the C-arm support system. So, interventional radiology suites often are equipped with C-arm support system, so-called because the system is like, or tingnan nyo to, it is shaped like letter C. So, interventional radiology suites. Kasi parang nag opera ka na doon eh. Pero, pwede din naman ito gamitin sa mga operating room, kung walang por kung mas preferred ng hospital niyo to use the C-arm other than the portable X-ray machine. Okay, so these systems are ceiling mounted and provide a very flexible X-ray tube positioning. The image receptor is attached to the other end of the C-arm. So this is the X-ray tube. Ito naman yung II or the image intensifier. Baka nagkamali ako, sorry. Kasi I'm not so practiced nowadays na eh. Okay, so... Um, Variations called L-arm or U-arm support also are common. Yan. So, doon nagtatapos. So, remember ha, the different support systems of the X-ray tube. So, again, we have the, ano yon? So, we have the ceiling support. We have the floor to ceiling support. And, of course, the C-arm. Now, let's come to the protective housing. As we said, yung mga nakikita natin sa, hindi, I, I mean, we cannot, directly see the x-ray tube although we know that it's there di ba? tulad ng tao, hindi natin nakikita yung heart okay, nakikita lang muna natin yung chest 
ibang usapan na yun. Okay, so the protective housing, di ba, like, like sa tao, prinoprotektahan yung heart ng chest. Sana all may nagpro-protect ng heart. So the protective housing incorporates specially designed high-voltage receptacles to prevent against accidental electrical shock. Ganun pala kasi... Kung mapapansin nyo, sabi natin kanina sa console, nag apply tayo ng kilo voltage, well, voltage and MAS. So, may mga wirings din pala doon inside the X-ray tube. So, kung walang balot yung X-ray tube, so, posible tayong makuryente. Death by electrocution was a real, very real hazard for early radiologic technologist. Siguro daw those times or those days, hindi pa ganon ka-safe yung kanilang composition. The protective housing also provides mechanical support for the X-ray tube and protects the tube from damage caused by rough handling. Yung abang, uh, baka may mga rad tech na palaging mainit yung ulo. Kung, okay, so... Ganon din kasungit, magdala ng x-ray tube, hala, rascal. Okay, so that's part. Kaya tawag sa kanya, protective housing. So to protect against rough handling. Okay? So yun. Yung nakikita natin, outside lang. So those are, the, this is the protective housing. The x-ray tube is here. Okay. So, the protective housing around some extra tube contains oil that serve as both insulator okay, and an electric uh, against electric shock and a thermal cushion. Kasi technically, 99% of the X-rays or the, the uh, projectile electrons are only converted are converted to heat only 1% is converted to x-ray kaya we can expect that um, ganun, there is a tremendous heat generated in the x-ray tube so some protective housings have cooling fan to air cool the tube or the oil in which the x-ray tube is immersed by the way this oil that we are talking about has given the name the yala oil hindi sana oil. Okay? So, a bellows-like device allows the oil to expand when heated. Siguro sa mga high, very high-tech ng x-ray tube. If the expansion is too great, a microswitch is activated so that the tube cannot be used until it cools. Okay? So, there's a limitation. Kaya, kung mapansin nyo sa x-ray department ng university, this is air-conditioned to protect against the tremendous heat again that is that will be generated by uh, by by the use okay S okay so aside from the protective housing we have here the glass or the metal enclosure okay pansin nyo. so it is covered with glass so an x-ray tube is an electric Electronic vacuum tube with components contained within a glass or within a metal enclosure. So, our illustration is particularly a glass enclosure. Before, this is called a glass envelope. So, there is now a um, modification of those terms. So, nag-update, update. Okay. So, the cathode and... Uh, yeah, so, it is relatively large, perhaps 30 to 50 centimeter long. Mm -hmm. So please please take note of the dimension and this is 20 cm in diameter. So the metal or the glass enclosure is made of pyrex glass. Alam niyo naman kung bakit. So again to prevent or to enable it to withstand the tremendous heat generated. So hindi siya madaling mag-crack, 'di ba? Hindi dire siya maglilitik. Bisan mabutangan mo mapaso kay pyrex. Ayun. So, maupay lagi hapon ang glass. Ano? Hindi siya marupok. Okay. Hindi siya breakable. Hindi tulad ng iba. Sana all. Joke. Okay. So, the enclosure maintains a vacuum inside the tube. Bakit, may, bakit kinakover natin? The purpose is to prevent air or liquid to come into these components because these are very sensitive now. Okay, so this vacuum allows for a more efficient X-ray production and a longer tube life. When just a little gas is in the enclosure, the electron flow uh, 
from cathode to anode is reduced, therefore fewer x-rays are produced and more heat is generated. Early x-ray tubes, modifications of the Crookes tube, diba? when Rentgen discovered x-ray, he used a particular type of tube which is called the Crookes tube. Okay, we're not vacuum tubes but rather contain controlled quantities of gas within the enclosure. The modern X-ray tube, take note, we are now using the Coolidge tube. This is a vacuum tube. Mm -hmm. If it becomes gassy, X-ray production fall, uh, falls and the tube can fail. So most of these failures can be discussed in the next semester. So, rather, aside from the glass, there is also the metal enclosure. So, an improvement in the tube design incorporates metal rather than glass as part or all of the enclosure. As a glass enclosure tube ages, some tungsten vaporizes and coats the inside of the glass enclosure. This alters the electrical properties of the tube, allowing the tube current to stray and interact with the glass enclosure. The result is arcing and tube failure. Okay? So, that's the modernization. Instead of using the glass, so pansinin nyo, it is already in form of metal. Okay, next. Metal enclosure tubes maintain a constant electric potential between electrons of the tube current and enclosure. Therefore, they have a longer tube life and are less likely to fail. So virtually all high-capacity X-ray tubes now use metal enclosures. And the X okay, so a segment of uh, this glass or metal enclosure, we have the... Ano, ano, ano yun? They have the window. So, the X-ray tube window, ito pala, lumayo pa ako. Ano? Ito pala. The window is an area of the glass or metal enclosure approximately 5 cm squared that is thin and through which useful beam of X-rays are emitted. So, dyan nadadaan yung um, useful beam. Ito, oh. So, such a window also or allows maximum emission of x-rays within or uh, with minimum absorption. Okay, so dyan lang muna tayo. Hanggang dyan lang muna tayo because mahaba-haba pa yung discussion natin. Baka maubos na yung data nyo. Okay, so if you have questions, do not hesitate. You may comment that in our uh, Facebook Messenger group chat or in our Moodle in the UEP e-learning portal, the very important one. And of course, you may comment here in this uh, video or you may, for those online or for asynchronous uh, learning, you may text or call me if you have concerns about my lecture. Okay, so this, uh, today I will formally end this lecture and I hope to see you next week. So, ingat-ingat then. Bye-bye.